Okay, good. Well, good afternoon. I'm glad that you've joined us. This is a webinar that Arizona Families for Home Education has set up with Arizona State Treasurer Kimberly Yee. And the reason that we asked uh, Treasurer Yee to be with us is because um, she has some really important information to share with um, our community and really any Arizona uh, resident about the 529 savings plan that you can take advantage of for your children's future educational expenses. But something that's really timely right now is also um, some holiday savings tips. I thought we would start with that because that's pretty immediate. I know I am in the thick of needing that right now. <laughs> it's uh, the middle of December and this is a winter webinar and most of us are doing some holiday prep. And so before I ask you to share some of those ideas with us, and I know you have some great ideas. Um, let me just introduce Treasurer Yi to our audience. Uh, Kimberly Yi is the State Treasurer of Arizona, as I mentioned, an elected position she's held since 2018. She's Arizona Chief, Arizona's Chief Banking and Investment Officer and oversees the cash management of Arizona's $64.7 billion state budget and payments to agencies, local governments, and schools. Treasurer Yi is the administrator of the AZ 529 Education Savings Plan. And since the fall of 2020, um, those assets have grown to over 1.89 billion with 33,632 no accounts open to help families it, with the savings plan. She's born and raised in Arizona. Treasurer Yee served as Senate Majority Leader and became the second woman to hold that position in Arizona's history following U.S. Justice uh, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, who served the position in 1973. If you are new to homeschooling, you might not know that Kimberly is well acquainted with homeschooling and has been a great advocate and friend to AFI at the Capitol for many years. And I'm just really pleased that she's um, jumping into this venture with us to share important information with our community. So thank you very much for helping out with this and coming to join us and why don't thank you start you, with Cindy. holiday savings tips or whatever else you want to share? Well, I just want to thank you, Cindy, as well as the leadership and all of the families involved in AFI. It's been a longtime partnership that we have had over the years, even during my time as a member of the state legislature. And we really tried to navigate those bills to not only protect homeschool families, their privacy, as well as to advance, you know, the wonderful things that we have in our freedoms and our school choice options here in Arizona. But to also share how fantastic um, our families are doing in our homeschool community. And it was at the very beginning uh, in the days I was working on education policy back in the 1990s that I would get calls, especially from the East Coast and on the states on the East, who would always just say, Arizona is just booming on the homeschool front. And I would just be so proud to be in a state where we really did uh, navigate that early on on what school freedoms looked like and particularly in the homeschool community and its continued growth and expansion over the years. Really great success stories. So I look forward to that continued partnership and it's exciting for me to be able to talk about what the Arizona Treasurer's Office does as the state treasurer. I am able to share with families across Arizona how they can be smart about money management. And um, as you shared earlier in the biography, not only do I manage the state's money and I invest it, but I also help to share really practical tips for families because I believe there is a direct correlation between how a family and individuals manage their money and the greater fiscal health of the state of Arizona. And when those two go together, we can do great things and the state becomes more prosperous. And so today I wanted to share a few tips. We are entering this holiday season um, and this is the most expensive time of the year. So how appropriate to talk about money. Um, there are just more expenses that happen during the December month. Um, and people oftentimes uh, really get lost in the hustle and bustle of it when it comes to spending because there's just a few more things to buy. So these are really going to be practical tips that I'll share. And then I would like to share a little bit about um, how we can look at money management from the side of preparing for education. So let's go ahead and go with the first slide. 
Thank you. These are some holiday savings tips that are really good for families to look out for in creating a simple budget. And when you start with planning a budget, you can put down on paper how much you have to spend. So take a look at what your checkbook says. That's the easiest measure of how much money you have in the bank. And when you take a look at what you want to spend in the month of December, you have to remember that there are lots of different expenses that come along with this holiday season. And oftentimes people forget, you know, you have to pay for stamps for those Christmas cards, or you have to pay for extra travel here and there. Maybe you have guests in town. There's going to be entertaining costs. Um, beyond that, there's just simple gifts that you put under the tree. Put a name uh, next to the amount that you want to spend for each individual that you will be spending on. And that helps you to prepare on paper what your measurements are. And I do feel that it, it's an old fashioned way of budgeting, but it's probably the best way to keep you in line with the money that you have in the bank. I always say that the simple principle is never spend more than you make, right? So if you uh, have a certain amount, don't spend over that amount or you will get into debt very quickly. Also take into consideration that um, there are lots of advantages during this time of year as well with respect to sales and discounts. Um, what I like to share, especially when we were out of the Thanksgiving holiday and we went to Black Friday, there's a lot of discounts that happen right now because people need from a merchandise standpoint to get the merchandise off the shelves. They want to make money too. So they're going to be putting some discounts on. Um, but we're kind of at a season right now where we're getting close, uh, you know, to the middle and the end of the month and the uh, supply will decrease quickly. So if you're looking for something specifically for that loved one, I would say, Buy it because it might not be there in a week or so because people will be shopping and the product that you might want really might go very quickly and it won't be available before uh, Christmas if that's uh, your deadline. And so I, I would always say go ahead and take advantage of those sales and discounts once you see it. Um, and next slide, please. There's also going to be a lot of special promotions and codes that you can look at for shipping if you are sending things to other states. Um, also, I wanted to mention that there are larger retailers out there, so take a look online, who offer price protection. So this means if you purchased something today, but next week it goes down in price and you have your receipt, many of these larger retails will often allow you to get that lower price within a reasonable timeline. Uh, so look for that opportunity so let's say you buy something you didn't love the price take a look at next week's ad see if it went down in price and if it did go back to the store with your receipt and ask for that refund maybe if they are a larger retailer they will honor it tip number three you see here is make a shopping list and check it twice what does this mean well um, I do believe that shopping online or in person is a, a helpful way of taking a look at comparison shopping um, and create a list of everything you want to purchase on that list and stick to it. Don't go off your list. I also um, I, I like to prepare people when they're going in the store or in a mall to go shopping because there's lots of ways to be distracted. So if you're going to go to a store and you are going to go down every single aisle because it is just so enticing to just see what's everywhere, you're going to probably go off your list because it's not going to be directed to that shopping list that you went into that store for, especially if you're going to go to a mall and you're going to walk down lots of different stores that were not on your list and you start walking in and out of them, you might end up getting maybe double what you were planning on getting. So stick to that list. Um, Again, it, it's very um, important that if your gift giving list is long, uh, make sure that you uh, take a look at what's on the shelves and buy that as it, you see it on the shelf. Because if you wait a little longer, it probably won't be there with the supplies. Um, and again, if you can take a look at number four, uh, avoid credit card debt. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of incentives out there that says buy now and pay later. What I like to you know share is there's something called nerd wallet. Um, there are other types of um, uh, annual shopping surveys, and they found that over half of Americans incurred credit card debt in the last holiday season. Thirty one percent of these individuals have still not paid off these types of balances from the last holiday. Consider opting for a cash purchase if you don't do well with credit cards. Um, these types of cash transactions allow you to stick to what is in your wallet. Uh, and, and again, 
if you really kind of go off your budget pretty easily, credit cards can be um, a little bit dangerous because it's just a piece of plastic rather than seeing your cash go down. And uh, many of you probably did know Dave Ramsey and other types of savings tips. When you see your cash, say, in a plastic bag and you watch each little cash piece go down, you know, each dollar going out of that plastic bag, well, that's when you can actually stay on track because you're seeing your money um, with every purchase. And so, those are simple um, tips there. And again, it, it might be tempting uh, to go into a re, um, a, a, an afterpay program like we were talking about, um, but try your best to only buy what you can afford at that time. Um, payment plans often have hidden types of fees or interest rates that you do want to avoid, maybe 15%. Stay within your budget and uh, again, never spend more than you make. It's a simple way of budgeting. Next tip, please. Number five. I have a very large family uh, and and we have lots of first cousins and of course they have young children. And so when you also have maybe a work group or a church group, maybe you wanna buy all of your friends something, but it's almost impossible when you start counting how many people you have. And so I often say in a workplace, in a community where you have individuals where you might want to buy something for everybody, but really it would be impossible to stay on budget if you did. I always suggest maybe a gift exchange and the holiday gift exchange idea is something that's been around for a long time, but it really is a practical way to be able to spend a quality gift to someone who is on that list. So if you are, uh, we're doing a white elephant gift exchange for my office in the treasury. So it allows us to buy something of value. So it's like 20, $25, whatever you decide that budget would be for that individual. You can have a really quality gift and it, and it's a fun way to play a game where you, you know, put all of the white elephant gifts together under the tree. You pick a number, somebody goes and gets the number you can trade off, you know, people like the other gift and it becomes a fun game. So I, I like to say you have a gift exchange or have a targeted name exchange where you have one name of a member of your family and that's the gift you give uh, to and, and it really just allows us to stay on budget um, and it really is a fun way to experience gift giving. Also, if you could take um, a look, I guess our, that is our last one. I wanted to talk today a little bit about saving for education and very, um, first of all, when I'm not the state treasurer of Arizona, I'm a mom and I have children. When we started our family, we almost immediately said, we've got to start putting money aside uh, for our children and their future for education. And so, when I uh, started working in the legislature, I was a member and I became state treasurer. I learned more and more about something called the 529 plan. Every state has roughly a savings plan. They call it whatever 529 plan in their own state. But in Arizona, for many years, it was called the AZ 529 college savings plan. And I didn't manage that when I first started as state treasurer in 2018. I actually started going to national conferences of state treasurers, and I learned that over 50% of my colleagues as treasurers of their states were managing this 529. And so I came back to Arizona after a conference, and I said, Arizona's 529 plan really isn't something that has expanded in a way that I think would be meaningful for parents. And we really needed to market it in a way that, people understood what the meaning of a 529 was and why it was important. So I took over officially, legislation was moved, the governor signed um, the transfer of authority from the Arizona 529 uh, college savings plan to my office at the Arizona treasurer's office in 2020. So in October of 2020, I became the official administrator of the Arizona 529 plan and I renamed it specifically to the education savings plan because I believe that higher education doesn't necessarily have to be a university setting, a community college setting. Higher education for me means a lot of things, meaning vocational school, trade school, apprenticeship programs, workforce development opportunities and training. And so we changed that name intentionally so that we would be able to market to families that you can save even $15 every month and set that aside and allow that interest to grow over time and have money available and ready in the account for your child to have a higher education opportunity so that they would be well trained um, in whatever they would decide to do when they grow up. So we do administrate uh, this uh, plan. It's called the Arizona Education Savings Plan. Um, 
It's a state sponsored tax free plan allowed through the federal 529 of the IRS code. Um, and it really does. It was always put there so that families can have an incentive for saving for their uh, child's future. Um, we in our office have Fidelity Investments, as well as Goldman Sachs, who help us on a day-to-day -day basis with families who want to start investing. They customize these wonderful savings account according to what your finances are. So you could be a very sophisticated investor, or you could be a first-time investor who wants to just be conservative and put whatever money extra you have aside. We have those options for every family. And again, like I said earlier, you can put just $15 a month, whatever your finances allow. Next slide. And as we shared earlier, this is the perfect time for looking at what an AZ 529 education savings plan does, because as we enter the holiday season, people are always looking for a gift that is unique. And I can't share enough how important a 529 plan is for any family, whether they have young kids just starting out, or even if their kids are in middle school or high school, it's never too early to start a plan. It's certainly never too late. And we are seeing that AZ 529 plans are not just for your child. It could be for your grandchildren. It could be uh, those who are opening up new accounts, maybe for a niece or a nephew. Um, you can get, if we can go to the next slide, you can receive uh, wonderful savings opportunities for so many different things. As I shared earlier, you can use this for a traditional college or a university setting when your child or your grandchild goes on to school. They could also be for trade schools, technical and vocational training, apprenticeship programs. Um, the law was changed so that you could also use this for private K through 12 education expenses, as well as loan repayments, qualified student loan repayments. Next slide. These earnings do grow tax free. They um, will have no federal or Arizona income taxes on the withdrawals for these types of qualified expenses. But we also promote that you get a tax deduction. So if you have one child, a beneficiary, um, and you want to um, put some money aside, you can file up to $2,000 per beneficiary in a tax deduction. If you're a married couple filing jointly, that's $4,000 for each beneficiary. There is no maximum. So you can have multiple children in a family and have up to $2,000 per child individually, or again, 4,000 for a married couple. And in this coming 2024 year, the federal government created a new law that allows any unused AZ-529 education savings money that is not used for whatever reason to be transferred over um, to a Roth IRA tax-free. So that's, that's great news, isn't it? And, yeah. and we've been talking about it all for a long time because a lot of families are like, well, how do you know what that expense is going to look like? And what if you have money left over? Well, there's always been the option to transfer whatever leftover money to a sibling or another family member. That's still going to be in place. But oftentimes they want to just keep it with the same beneficiary. But now you can move it over to a Roth IRA and start saving for retirement. So next slide. So we talked earlier about, you know, we're in the holiday season and you want to be able to have a little fun with this, right? So if you wanted to start a 529 plan, it's easy to do. It literally is minutes online. You create an account for whatever uh, person that is. It could be, like I said, it doesn't have to be a child. It could be yourself. A lot of people are wanting to go back to school. They're adults. They want to re-career. This could be your own account for 529s. And, and again, let's no, just say no, you were an account holder and you decide, okay, I was going to re-career. I was going to go back to school, but I've made a decision not to. I'm going to change the um, beneficiary to somebody else in my family. Th those are all flexibilities that you can do. But what's um, amazing is that a lot of families are really taking a look at these holidays to be able to open a 529 and give that as a unique gift to a family member. Again, they could be a grandparent opening this up for their grandchild, a, an uncle or aunt who's saying, oh, I have a niece or nephew. I'm not, I don't have kids yet, but this is what I want to do for uh, my young niece or nephew. So what you could do um, is really take a look at what that recipient looks like. So they're a child. They want to grow up and be a veterinarian, right? They love um, to go to the zoo. Well, maybe you could uh, make a fun career costume of what that looks like and wrap that up and then let them know that um, you can 
be a, a veterinarian and here's the account that I just started for you so that you can work your way to the education you need to be in that fun career. Next slide. Oh, this is our uh, slide that does talk about how many accounts we have created in just 37 months. So roughly three years, we have had this uh, 529 plan in our office. I am so proud to announce that we've had 33,632 brand new accounts opened in that very short period of time. Think That's about how many families. That's a month. Isn't it amazing? It's been very busy over there. We really have. It's because we have amazing staff and we also have amazing partners. And we really, I wanted to share with families across Arizona how important this was by translating this into Spanish and Navajo and going into communities where they've never even thought about going to college. And I'm sharing with them, if you have $15 a month and you want to just set that aside, it's going to grow over time and you can have that opportunity to go to college. And so or any trade school. And so this number showcases the hard work that we have done to really expand the message and marketing of this really important program. And if you think about it, when people have even that short experience, um, whether it's short or four years or whatever it is, of getting a higher education, um, whatever that looks like for that individual, they're going to be that much more skilled on the job and that means we as consumers and customers and all of the things that we are in the workplace we're going to be able to have those types of services be, have more qualified individuals on the job it's going to be amazing once we see this long term next slide and I'm really proud to address that over this short period of time, um, Morningstar, which is the rating company for all 529s across the country, increased our rating from bronze, where it was before I took over the plan, to today, silver. And so we're really proud of that increase in rating. It did showcase specifically that our people rating was level high. It was called high um, because we really have marketed this to families and individuals from across the state. But that number that you saw, believe it or not, they're not just Arizona residents. People are learning about the AZ-529 plan from other states and they're opening our program for their families. They're getting their own tax deduction in their state, but they are opening our, our plan. Next slide. And so I'm excited to share that, you know, one of the things that we engage children with in the 529 space, because it's sometimes, you know, just the tax deductions and everything else is very complicated for them, we want to bring them into this discussion and the exciting conversation about what do you want to be when you grow up? Because every kid wants to talk about, you know, the exciting opportunities that they might have. And as you know, lots of kids have three jobs that they want to have. You know, they're going to be a race car driver and an NBA star and, you know, a gamer. And so, so we love to engage them in a fun way by giving them an opportunity for a contest where they talk about their dream job, they write it on paper if it's an essay contest, but this January, we are kicking off on January 29th, an art contest. And this is for K through sixth graders. And we ask them to draw their dream job in a picture and it can be any type of medium. And we, um, we accept these through our online um, az529.gov backslash 20, you can see that on the screen right there, by March 3rd, that's the deadline. And we're going to be choosing 14 students as winners. We ensure that all winners will represent across the board, um, homeschoolers, tribal schools, uh, private schoolers, charter schoolers, regular district school kids. All of them will be able to um, have um, an entry, but we are purposefully selecting students to represent all of those types of great school options that we have in Arizona. So take a look at that website at az529.gov because we will have the a flyer on there that you can download or market that to your homeschool groups, as well as just, we always have on our 529 page, a Q and A, so it's, it's like a, a little form. So if you have questions about 529s, you just send that off in an email and it comes to us and we can answer your question. And um, I think the next slide, 
That's our information, az529.gov. Our phone number is right there. We we work the 529 plan out of the Office of the Arizona Treasurer. Um, and again, I just want to thank you so much for this time to talk about this important program for savings. This is not only an important time of year to talk about money management, but really it's, an, an, it's always an important time to talk about how we can prepare for our children and their future. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions at this time, if there are any. Um, I wanted to just say I've been following um, following your office on social media, and it has been so fun seeing the kids receive their huge checks, their five hundred twenty nine dollar yes. checks, um, in in uh, as a reward for their entries, whether it was the essay contest or their art contest, and uh, yeah, the just the the array and the variety of things that they're interested in, and the fact that they get to come to the ceremony, the winners do, and and get their picture taken. I think that's really motivating. And any time that it gets them thinking about it, that's that's a win for a parent. Yeah. You know, getting their getting their kid thinking about the future and you know what's it going to take to achieve that dream and how can we work together to to get you there. And that's something that has been really a strength of homeschooling. I think is that you can customize and really um, direct your child's education toward how they're made, how God designed them. Yeah. Um, what, what you see emerging in their interests and their skill or um, their aptitudes and and get them ready for that. And this is just another fantastic way to help them get ready for that. I do have a couple of questions that were submitted and that came up. So um, I'm going to refer to my notes here so that I say it right. Um, one, one person uh, just asked, what are all the ins and outs? I don't know anything about this. And so it was just a, a uh, wow, this is a great opportunity, but I, I'm at square one. How do I learn about this? Yeah. And so the, the information that you've shared is really good. I know that you have a lot of resources on your website for families, not only about the 529, but uh, just other um, smart financial information strategies, tools they can use. So um, they would go to that same website, the aztreasury.gov, if they want to yes. so access if you would like to resources. Take, yes, perfect question, because... On the az529.gov website, which you see currently on the screen, is for the education savings plan. But when we talk overall about savings and financial education tips, I would suggest going to aztreasury.gov. And we have that also if you take a look sort of at that email down there. Um, aztreasury.gov is our general treasury website. And we have uh, great tips for, fin it's an education portal for finances. And it really allows for those who are interested from senior citizens to download some tips and savings um, for those communities, as well as military families and veterans, vulnerable families, as well as our K through 12 communities where we have young children. So downloading those free resources is really helpful. And we also talk to groups all the time throughout the year. So I like to bring my Lego blocks and we talk about the importance of um, smart spending as well as, of course, savings. And, you know, from the perspective of stewardship, all we always like to talk about the importance of giving. And so we will be happy to, to bring those ideas to your groups as well um, and have an in-person, you know, type of setting. We also really engage children um, in, in many ways by just helping them understand the importance of earning their money by maybe doing tours around the house. And, and I like to say that when people, even adults, earn that money, they work for it it becomes valuable to them. So they don't feel entitled, right, to whatever money comes from wherever it was worked for. And, and that really is something where when you have that um, hard work and labor in the money that is in your pocket, you will spend it wisely uh, and I, or you will save it wisely. And I think that's something that I like to teach young kids so that they can learn early um, the meaningfulness of the money that they will make as adults. That is an important dynamic in in spending decisions is what was the source of those funds and that that you know in in the way we process that it, it affects the decisions we make about spending it and I know that financial literacy is part of your mandate as well that that's um, something that's really important to your office is helping not only young people but but us grown ups mm -hmm. be smart be be um, well acquainted with what it's like to handle money wisely and and to steward it and so i appreciate that um that perspective of of stewardship and and of of wisdom in financial matters so thanks for for that yeah. i did want to also ask um you you mentioned you could open an account for 
a relative or or for someone else. So the accounts, the 529 accounts, um, I guess the name, if you had four children, you would need four accounts if you wanted yes. to save for each one. Is that how that works? Yes, each beneficiary needs an individual account. And again, uh, the tax deduction can be for each beneficiary up to $2,000 for each one. And the again, a married account is the, is the child. Because well, if we're can... managing it as the parent. So uh, each each beneficiary will have that parent listed with their name and that parent will be managing, of course, that account. So, for instance, um, in the case where you have a, a beneficiary who is a child, um, you open that account for them as the parent or let's just say you're the grandparent. You just need all of the basic information to open that account for your grandchild. And so, again, the manager of that account can be a family member. Um, but you do need to have all of the basic information about that child and and it really can only stay with that beneficiary. Um, and and again, when that account continues to grow, you get notification. Also, you, there's lots of wonderful links that you can share of that account beneficiary to whoever you want on um, helping others know that they can contribute to that fund too, right? So let's say it's this time of year, you're putting out your family email of what you've done in 2023, and you can always say, hey, this is a great time if you would like to, you know, um, help our, our family. Uh, we have these 529 started, uh, and here you go. If you'd like to just contribute whatever, you're, you know, um, would be helpful for for uh, your account, that's something they can contribute directly using yes. um, a gift link. Yes. That's simple gift giving for grandparents. That's it really that's, is. That's awesome. The, um, uh, I was struck by the, the point you made about uh, the new ability to use those funds for K through 12 uh, private school expenses. So, um, you know, say you're homeschooling, you, you plan to do it up until, uh, you know, high school or something, but then your child really wants to go to your alma mater because you went to a, you went to a private school and that they want to go to the same one, then that could be building until that time. Or, um, I, I want people to hear, um, I think I know the answer to this, but this could be also used for, um, like a gap year or for, uh, could it be used for Christian schools, Bible schools? Any, any qualified private school in the K through 12 space. So if you, if there are some, maybe a class, a lab or something where that private school might be helpful in that season, right? And you're going to enroll for that semester or whatever, you know, maybe they have a summer program, but it's a private school and it's a qualified um, institution. Yes, they can use these for a K through 12 private school experience in the K through 12 space. Great. And I know that people have all, you know, tons of specific questions about their specific situations and your staff is equipped to answer those questions or Fidelity and Goldman Sachs can answer the questions about the ins and outs of the, the legal setup. So thanks for all this information. I know that there's one other thing I wanted to ask. Oh, can you, you, you showed the slide about the growth in the program, um, not only the number of accounts, but the number of dollars, which is enormous. And that's that's really impressive, but it made me wonder why you think there's been such growth. Mm -hmm. um, are, are people more concerned about the cost of higher education? Are they are they uh, not sure that scholarships or grants are gonna be around? Or what, why do you think that, that there's that growth? Well, this program, the 529s in Arizona has been around for 25 plus years. It only, it was hidden away in a small bureaucratic office in the in state government. And unfortunately, they didn't market this program in a way that was meaningful for families. Many families just didn't even catch wind of what it was, as we know, based on some of the questions you know, you've, you've seen. Um, and so we have marketed 529s in a way that's never been done in the state of Arizona before. We're out on social media. We have um, put this out on not only um, radio ads, but you know other ways that people are actually seeing this for the first time. But I really wanted um, to intentionally reach out to communities that 
really weren't even thinking about higher education before. And so the greatest growth we've seen has actually been in those very communities. And, and, and that's really meaningful to me because I want every child to have the best opportunity um, after they graduate from high school. And it doesn't matter what your zip code is. Um, and that is exactly what our results have shown. So um, I do believe marketing has been a really key aspect of the huge growth that we've seen. Um, it's also been just really understanding what was the barrier, right? So if the barrier was that people didn't feel that college was for them, we're sharing with them, it's not just college that you can save for higher education. Higher education is lots of things, trade schools and workforce programs, apprenticeship programs, in fact, with the number, the growth that we've had in Arizona and the number of jobs, um, we probably do need, you know, more marketing in the way that we do have to uh, educate our young children to be ready for those uh, skilled jobs. And um, so it's really exciting to see the growth. I've been most surprised with the number of accounts from outside of Arizona. <laughs> that's been my, my biggest surprise because that's a significant number of non-Arizona residents opening up AZ-529 accounts. There's no... You know, there's no uh, barrier to whatever state that you are from. You just have to get your tax deduction from your own state. But ours is, um, ours is a great program. And again, I've I've just started as the administrator for these last three years. We have a great team, not only inside of our office working on five two nines every day, but great partners across. Um, so many different areas, but I just appreciate, like you said earlier, um, families oftentimes, this is just an intimidating subject. So rather than ask the questions they don't know to ask, they just leave it behind. And that's what we don't want. We want people to ask your questions no matter what they are. Don't be intimidated by the subject. You will find great meaningfulness if you start even a small amount of money for your child's future. And it will grow over time and you won't be disappointed. So I, I just share that. Um, we have a Q&A section again um, in our website for az529.gov, which answers a lot of basic questions. Um, but if you have additional ones, there is an email that you can send any questions to or call our office and we'll be able to direct you to the right person. I see that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time today and your willingness to just share lots of information to be accessible to the people of Arizona and to parents and to kids in uh, those settings that you talked about where you can explain financial concepts with things in ways that are meaningful to young children and um, help them start thinking about what it's like to be a grown up because they all will be someday. You don't get to right. be a kid forever. So I thanks know. for your, your input and um, all of the resources that you share. I hope that people will go to that website. We'll get lots of um, good information and ask the questions. Like you said, we all have things to learn. Let's learn about this and be smart. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Cindy, and thank you to Afi for all that you do. Um, and again, Merry Christmas during this holiday season. Yes. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thanks to everyone who helped put this together, the whole team. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.